All right. Oh. Okay. Everyone sees the presentation or we see your terminal window now. Okay. I'll do it like this. Hit play. Is this working now? Are you seeing the presentation? So we see your presentation plus the, here we go. This is perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, welcome everyone to my very first lightning talk about Rails internationalization. Um, so I'm Nico van Kamp, uh, a wannabe web developer living in Belgium and currently enrolled in the Firehose program. So um, today I'll try to give a hands-on session on how to make a multi-language Rails application from scratch. Okay, so I'll do this by a step-by-step -step approach and I would love to start with an introduction and show the application that will be making multilingual. Okay, so this is the application. Uh, we have a homepage that lists uh, several beers. Uh, every beer has a rating and we can click detail for a beer and read a small description and we're reading that Duval is the best beer in the world according to Nico. And <laughs> we can go back. And basically that is uh, the application that we will make multilingual. So the first step that we need to do is we need to translate our static text. So in this case here, the title should be translated. Um, in order to do that, we need to find the static text that we want to internationalize in our view template. And then we need to extract it out so that it can be loaded um, dynamically based on the user selected language. So let's start with that. I'll open my index file. And we have our title here. And this title needs to be replaced with a translation. Um, Rails makes it fairly easy to do that. Um, we can do that oh, by replacing this text uh, with call method, the T method, T stands for translate. And then we need to pass in a unique key to, ident to identify that text. So we'll use beers.title. If we save this and refresh our browser, we see that the title is replaced and we retitle here. So let's inspect this and see what's happening. And it says that our translation is missing. And this actually makes totally sense because here in the index file, we only created a unique key that we will use to make the translation. So the next thing we need to do is actually translate this unique key. And Rails default setup is um, that this is managed in YAML files, and those are stored in the config folder, locales, and then here we have the English language. There's already some default content. I'll replace this now with here, here's title, and I'll place the title in here. Um, you actually want to note that here in the beers, uh, dot title, um, the dot, the period here is represented in the YAML file by nesting it in, so Pierce title. Um, if we now refresh our homepage, we see that the title is actually uh, appearing as it should. Now we have our uh, English YAML file, but for this demo, I want to use a second language, so I'll um, create a new YAML file for a new language. Uh, and I'll use a Dutch language. So I'll create a YAML file for it. I'll copy this over, paste it in here. I change here the EN oh. to the NL, and I'll translate my title by saying Okay, we save this. And now you really have to pay attention. Every time you add a new YAML file, you should restart your Rails server. Because if not, Rails won't pick up the extra YAML file. So we restart our server. 
we refresh our page and everything is still working and both languages are translated. So actually that's the first issue that we tackled. Uh, and now we should go on to the, to the second one. Um, now we actually want to make sure that the user can select a language because as of now, there's no possibility to do that. And I already created a drop down field here for the language selection menu. So let us build now the links um, where the user can actually choose what language he wants to um, have served by the web application. So we'll have to edit our nav bar. I'll replace this here with language. And then I'll create my links to set a locale. So link to the English version and I'll provide the locale English. And then we also need to add the possibility for the second language, Dutch. Okay, we save this up. We go back to our browser and the drop down menu changed. We have the language appearing here. We can use the drop down selection, select English and select Dutch. At this point, there really isn't happening that much. The only thing that happens is in our URL. The locale param um, is passed to the URL. So the next thing we need to do is the locale param that is given in the URL, we need to check this and change the language based on it. And the Rails convention to do that is create a, is create a before filter in the applications controller. So let's do that now. So I'll create a before filter and I'll name the filter set locale. Next, I'll create a private method for it, set locale. And here we actually have to make sure that the language that the user chose is passed to the IATM locale value. So, and in this case, um, this actually would be the params that are given to the URL, so the locale params. I want to make sure that if no params are given, that Rails uh, would use the default language. And the Rails default language is English. So I'll define that here as well. If there's no param available, then we use the default locale. Okay, I'll save this. Go to my application. Change the language again. And great, our title is actually uh, appearing in Dutch like it should be. So another issue is solved after the next step. Um, we should make the language choice persistent. What do I mean by that? Um, now, if I check an individual page, the language preference is gone. If I go back to the home page, again, the language preference is gone. So we need to make sure that Rails remembers this preference. And you might think that you want to store the language uh, selection in a session or a cookie, but that's really not the right way to do it. Um, because I learned that the Rails convention says that the locale actually should be transparent and part of a URL. Um, and this way, you won't break people's basic assumptions about the web itself. Um, if you send a URL to a friend, a colleague, family member, they should exactly see the same page and content as you. And by using cookies or storing this uh, information in a cookie, you will prevent that. And in developer terms, we actually want to make sure that our application is restful. So how will we solve this? Um, what I want is that if language params are given, I want them to persist in the URL like this. If it's English, I want to have it like this. And if it's Dutch, I want to have it like this. That's actually what I want to achieve. So let's go back to our editor and open the routes file to do that. And the way we do this is uh, by using the scope methods and we will scope our locale param uh, in before all these routes that we already defined. Uh, 
Okay, we save the file. We go to our web page again and we refresh. And we're getting an error. Okay, let's see what's actually happening here. Um, the reason why this error occurs is that our locale param that we have here, that the, pro the product data, in this case here, the beer data, is actually being passed as a locale option. So we need to resolve that. And luckily for us, Rails uh, is a very convenient framework and has a method to help us to help us with this. So we need to define this method in our application controller. And the method is called the default URL options. And by using this method, Rails will actually call this method to determine the default options that should be passed into the URL generators. So provide options. And here in this case, the option that we should, uh, the param that we actually uh, should set is locale, and the locale should be equal to the I18 locale that we set up before. If we save this, and we go back to our application, and we refresh this, then everything is working like it should. We can still change our languages, go to another page, and go back. So we've done a lot already, but there's a last thing we need to do to improve our routing. That's the last step. Because at this moment, if I would hand in this URL, I get an error that beers is not a valid locale. So Rails actually considers the beers as a locale param and can find it because we only have the English and Dutch one defined. So what we should do is in our routes file, we have our scope locale. We should make that more restrictive and say there are only a certain uh, values of the locale param that we will accept. And in this case, that would be only the English one and the Dutch one. And in case that neither the English nor the Dutch locale param is given, you shouldn't use the locale param at all. So we make this optional. We save our file, we refresh, and it's working as intended because it's now serving the default language. Um, there's one minor thing we could do to improve our code. Um, in here, we hard-coded our locales. So if in the future, you would need uh, to add another language, you have to change your routes file again. And that's something we want to prevent. And we can do this by calling the IATN available locales. And this will actually um, provide us or return as an array. And yet we can join by pi. And it should be working then. So in the future, if we, had, if we would like to add another language, it would be as easy as adding the other YAML files. So that's basically it for my lightning talk. Uh, in my presentation, uh, I have several more uh, tips and tricks that you could uh, read into and ask me questions about it. But I think I'm already over my time. So you can look into those uh, if you're interested in it. Are there any questions? I've got a question. Actually, I got a couple of questions. Okay. Um, do you have to manually go in and do all of the translations, or do they have like language packs you can do um, to pair together for dictionary searches or something like that? Yeah. Okay. So that's really a good question. Um, Which I'm sure your slides answer. <laughs> So perfect question, Colin. Thanks for that. Uh, so for a small application like this, uh, managing the YAML files is really easy. 
but uh, for larger applications, it can be a really painful experience. Um, and you can use uh, different alternative backends to manage those applications. Uh, I tried several of them, um, and I prefer the locale app the most, and you have a link to that. So that makes it a lot easier uh, also to work as a group uh, on the translations, uh, have a clear overview of how many percent of the application is already translated and stuff like that. Okay. And then does it, when you load your website, does it load up both translations at the same time or only when you select the language? Um, I think, um, I actually don't know. <laughs> so that's a good question. I know that it's, it's loaded based on the user's selected languages, but I don't know if it's preloaded or not. Um, so I would have to check into that. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious if like you had 20 languages on there, if they're all going to load all at once, and if that's going to have any sort of performance uh, setbacks for your application. I would imagine you would only load it when you select the language. But. Yeah. So I have a question. I have a feeling that you have a slide for this one, too. Um, what do you do about user inputted data? So like we can, we as developers can be like nice and sort of translate stuff into multiple languages, but like it's hard to be like, like users, you should be translating stuff into nine languages, like you might not know them. So how do you, are there like workarounds or like what, what approaches do people take about that stuff? So um, you're actually talking about database content that needs to be translated? Exactly, yeah, yeah. So then there's only one solution is to uh, use a global as gem, which is actually the standard library for all active record uh, model translation. So it just will automatically translate it? Um, well, if you want to translate um, things, my advice is always don't translate yourself, but look if somebody else already made the translations. Um, so there's a really useful repository uh, Ruby on Rails uh, IATN, and there's a lot of information over there. There are uh, predefined uh, translations for most languages, like uh, days, weeks, years, stuff like that. Um, and then another advice is um, if you install a particular gem, just immediately do Google search for gem IATN, uh, and there are a lot of popular gems that already have the different translations uh, of all the fields done. For example, I've used device myself, and it works for Awesome. So anybody else, talk. anybody else have any questions or? Cool, good stuff. Well, Nico, um, well done. Um, live coding um, on the fly, like kudos to that. That's sort of like a dangerous uh, situation. You <laughs> yeah, <know>. very scary. <laughs> uh, a lot of things can go wrong and nothing did, so congrats, like it went flawlessly and uh, super, super impressed. Excellent talk.